Today is my last day in the world's first national park, with possibly my most exciting wildlife sighting yet, hot springs unlike anywhere else in the park, and ice cream found only in the Northwest United States. Today's day in Yellowstone is guaranteed to be the perfect ending to my adventures here. Good morning everyone, it is day four and today we are going to Lamar Valley in the morning just to see, hoping to see more animals. First we are stopping at Gardener Market just to restock on some groceries. Guys, Gardener Market is amazing. They literally have everything. It felt like shopping back at home. So even though sometimes when you go on vacation, the stores aren't too well stocked, I'm telling you, they have everything. Now that we're done restocking on groceries, we are going to Lamar Valley. I'm so excited to go here because Lamar Valley is one of the top wildlife spots here and I have high hopes for this one. And I was not wrong about that because look what we just spotted barely into the trip. I was so thrilled to see this black bear because yesterday we saw it in the dark so I was really hoping to see one during the daylight and sure enough, we did. This is a pretty up close view of a bear. Honestly, we got really lucky. I'm convinced this was a grizzly because it wasn't a bison and what else is brown and furry? Also, I was competing with my dad for who could spot more bears, so please just take my word for it. Lamar Valley has the largest herds of bison compared to anywhere else in the park and there will be moments where you just see dots spread across the grass and then you come closer and you realize these are bison. We are among a very iconic animal right now. These are pronghorn and they are the world's fastest land mammals, only coming second to a cheetah. They can reach speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. Oh my gosh, wildlife spotting. Right next to you. We have somewhat spotted a grizzly at the very, very top. It's a dot, but somehow knowing that it's a grizzly makes a dot cute as well. We heard some thunder, so I think it's gonna rain soon. And I think the bison realized it too, because now as a whole herd, they're going, they're crossing the road. And I just think it's crazy that they can communicate in that way and they can just sense it. With that, our time in Lamar Valley has come to an end. Our journey in Yellowstone doesn't end here. Now we are going to Tower Fall, which is 30 minutes away. We are at Tower okay. Fall Overlook right now. Yeah. It has lightly started raining, sprinkling more like. If there's a store, I'm going in, even if I don't need anything. There is someone in our trunk right now. Okay, let's rewind and go back to the moment where it all started. Okay. We're trying to decide which one we like more. Mm. We're literally comparing it to the pictures of the bison. I like this one better. I just think it's, it's way cuter. But Asmi likes this one better because she thinks he's more realistic. It was so cute when we were checking out. Um, the lady at the register was being really cute about it. And what did she say? She gave us a bag. She was like, oh, do you want a bag from him or her? And we're like, yeah. And she said there's lots of room in there for him to have a last final stretch. 
That's so cute. You're probably wondering which bison did we end up picking? This is the bison we ended up getting. He is so cute. We couldn't be happier. Also, we don't mow the lawn anymore because he just grazes on the grass and takes care of that for us. We are done with Towerfall with the cutest addition ever, and now we are going to Norris Geyser Basin. This place is literally called Bear Country because there are so many huckleberries down there, there's a good chance you could see a grizzly bear roaming around for them. One thing about Yellowstone is that several parts of the park don't have a lot of cell service, so the apps that you use can definitely make a difference. Since we don't gatekeep around here, I thought I would share what apps I've been using that have been really helpful on this trip. The map is exactly like the paper map that they give you, except in addition to that, it has a little blue dot that is essentially tracking you and showing you exactly where you are in the park. And this is so helpful so that you know if you're going in the right direction or not, especially because there's no service. You're not going to have Google Maps or anything to tell you exactly how to get to other places. The next app the is the, the NPS app. This one has information about all of the parks and it's really detailed too. So it'll have different categories for things to see, visitor center hours, basically anything that you're looking for. And what you can do the night before is pick whatever park you're in and download all that information so that you have offline access to that. I will say sometimes even though I had downloaded it the night before for offline access, it didn't always work. But for the most part, even if the images don't load, at least I some information will be available. One of the things I'm talking about is you can look at different hikes and it's really detailed. One of my favorite features on this app is the self-guided tour section. You can read in-depth information about almost every geyser on the trail, see their location on a detailed map, look at photos, and the most exciting part, listen to an audio tour. For a moment, slow down and take in the sights, sounds, and smells. And finally, the last thing that I used was the Geyser NPS Twitter account, and this would post any of the predictions for when the Old Faithful Geyser would erupt, and it was pretty accurate, so make sure to check that. Obviously, if there's no service, you can't really check Twitter, but before you get into the park, check We are at Norris Geyser Basin. I fell asleep in the car before this for like 20 minutes and then woke up and we're here now. That place was called Emerald Spring and the reason that it's emerald is because the minerals in that pool, the main one is sulfur and that's yellow and then the light itself in that pool is absorbing all the colors except for blue. So the blue plus the yellow from the sulfur makes a cool, unique emerald color. Oh. Pretty recently, I remember before our trip, I read that Norris Geyser Basin was closed down for just a little bit because a bison walked over one of the boardwalks and it literally cracked. It's open again, but I think that's hilarious. This is Steamboat Geyser, the world's tallest active geyser. This is literally sizzling. Can you see that? My family just said I would make a good tour guide. Can you tell I'm blushing? We are now heading to Mammoth Hot Springs, just 40 minutes away. If I had ever previously said that I had seen the most exciting sign of wildlife yet, I take it back because this one definitely tops them all. There's a grizzly. Oh my God. I honestly can't believe this is real. This is the closest and clearest I've ever seen a grizzly bear in my life. I honestly can't even comprehend that I was within a pretty significant radius of one of the most deadly animals on this planet. See that shoulder muscle right there? That is the giveaway that this is a grizzly. And to make things even better, we were so surprised to see that there were two cubs with this mama bear. 
The cubs were struggling and trying to climb up the tree, but it was so adorable. At this point, there was a pretty significant crowd and we were all just watching in awe that this moment was real. Oh my goodness, you guys, we just saw a grizzly bear with three cubs. It was insane. We've had a couple grizzly bear spawnings, but this was the first time where we really properly got to see her face and her body. So it made it more special, like she was close enough for that for the first time. The other times it was just like quickly passing by the road. So this was really special. It went on for like 15 minutes. Our drive to Mammoth Hot Springs proceeds and we come across even more wildlife along the way. Now we are at Mammoth Hot Springs, which is near Gardner, Montana. But it's actually in a town called Mammoth. That would make sense. So far we have seen four of the five types of hydrothermal features seen in Yellowstone. And today is the day we see the fifth one, Travertine Terraces. This honestly looks like a different planet. There was a sign down there that said route to the top, but it didn't directly take us to the top. And then we saw these stairs that actually lead to the top and we thought we were so smart and we were like, oh, the, the sign is wrong. They put it in the wrong place. Well, it turns out they actually surprisingly they know what they're doing and we don't. Who would have thought? So what we thought was the rock to the top was actually closed. And so they had a reason for putting that sign where it was meant to be. Having those gray storm clouds in the back almost brings out the color of the mammoth hot springs even more. It kind of looks dystopian. I was that actually kind of steep though. I was not expecting that. I thought it would be an easy climb up the stairs. One article that I read put it best, Mammoth Hot Springs looks like an inside out cave. The water at these hot springs is at around 170 degrees Fahrenheit. It is raining and we can't remember where we parked our car. We have a feeling where it is, but we're not sure. We are picking up my mom and my sister because they decided to stay back. My favorite thing about Gardener has to be the fact that there are casually pronghorn and deer just walking alongside the gates of the city. It's so cute and it never gets old. This is probably the closest we've gotten to Pronghorn. Since we made it back to Gardener early for once, places were actually open, so we got to experience an evening in Gardener. Why are you eating with the Mmm, I actually like it. Asmi and I are sharing an ice cream and we got the huckleberry flavored one because apparently huckleberries only grow in Northwest America with the Rocky Mountains and bears eat huckleberries. So we really wanted to try it and it tastes so good. <laughs> I feel like it tastes like, mm, everyone does it taste like a strawberry or no? No. Oh, I could do a little strawberry. Do you like it? Strawberry means blueberry. Looks like we can have lunch with the bears mm -hmm. until they eat us. That's their Berry lunch. I was thinking that because bears really mm -hmm. like huckleberry, they would really enjoy huckleberry ice cream. So we could grab just a bunch of huckleberries from trees, grab mama bear's milk, mix the two, crush it nice and well, stir it up a little bit, mm -hmm. go to like somewhere really Cold, like up in elevation where they are, and you have ice cream. And can you just imagine them eating this? You love it.
After four days in Yellowstone, our time here has come to an end, but I honestly didn't want it to. Every single day in the world's first national park was eventful, whether it was seeing distinctive hydrothermal features that exposed the inside of the earth, or some of the most compelling encounters with wildlife. But I'm not ready to go home just yet. I'm heading to Grand Teton National Park next, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for being with me on this trip, and I'll see you very soon. Bye! This one has all of the apps and map, but I think it's really interesting how for this geyser loop, basin loop, what am I saying? Little town. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm tour guide Barbie. Go. Your hair is a little messy. Okay. And this was the. It's too bright. What happens in oil stays in wire.